What is dead and alive in India's past? When it comes to water technologies, tanks and ponds have sustained for centuries. It provides the most essential requirement, water for plants and animals. Found almost in every habitation, small and big, in varying shapes, they offer water. You are now looking at a topographic sheet of southern Tamil Nadu, prepared by the US Army. Just look at this. Blue shades are tanks, the black dots are habitations. Almost every habitation has got one tank. It is all man-made and those who lived there created them. Nothing natural about them. Tanks have survived centuries. The builders are honored and remembered. Hundreds of villages are named after them. Undoubtedly, Tanks are the most important rural infrastructure in southern India, where there are not many ever-flowing rivers. Rainfall here is seasonal, erratic and undependable. It occurs in heavy downpours and most of which happens in less than 40 days. Since water is needed throughout the year, it needs to be stored locally. Decentralized storages like these tanks help to capture water from the local catchments. They are called Kanmai and Kulam in South Tamil Nadu. Normally, tanks are formed by throwing a long bund on a sloping ground. Water is stored behind the buns that is on the upstream side and called water spread area. It is used for cultivating crops on the downstream side that is below the bund and called IA cut. Sluices are water conducting mechanisms. Water flows to the fields by gravity Depending on the size of the tank, there may be one or more sluices. Flat waters are let out safely through the veers. They are located at the end of the buns. The flood waters reach the low-lying tanks through the supply channels. In that way, a chain of tanks or tank cascades are formed. Though appeared to be crude and simple earthwork, they are sophisticated in their engineering design and need some appreciation of engineering behind it. Similarly, ponds are many types. Some are beautifully constructed and many are simple dugout ponds. They have inlets for water to enter and some may have steps and bathing carts. Technical features of tanks and their structures vary greatly depending on their history, geography, sizes of irrigated area and above all their location. For example, a district like Shivaganga has a geographical area of 4,200 square kilometer but has around 5,000 tanks and ponds. Nearly one-fifth of its geography is irrigated by tanks. There is water body for every square kilometer. Without them, this landscape will be desolate and unlivable. The vast majority of tanks irrigate around 20 hectares or less but there are exceptions like the Viranam tank that stores water to irrigate 19,000 hectares. All South Indian rivers are trained to feed the thousands of these tanks. Huge rivers like Vaigai ends up in tanks, hardly ever it reaches the sea. In 2020, Tamil Nadu has around 40,000 tanks and irrigates around 0.5 million hectares. There may be another 200,000 ponds connected to the tanks, benefiting all habitations. In many ways, these village tanks and ponds are part of the rural lives and livelihoods. They are the chief sources of water for agriculture and livestock in rural areas. In tank-fed lands, paddy is the major crop after the northeast monsoons. When the water is insufficient, Farmers cultivate short-duration crops requiring less water. In the coastal districts of South Tamil Nadu, the groundwater is either saline or not available in plenty. Hence, the ponds become a preferred and important source of domestic and drinking water. Domestic and agricultural wells are normally located closer to tanks and ponds so that they get recharged from them. Millions of wells get recharged from the tanks and ponds. They are also sources of culture. 
many South Indian villages have temples, churches and masjids on the buns of tanks and ponds. It is a custom that places of rituals and celebrations must have a pond or a tank. Apart from water, tanks do offer many uses. Cattle are usually taken out for grazing on the beds, buns and channels and hence these land spaces are the main sources of grazing and livestock economy. The silt that arrives into the tank along with the water is excellent organic manure which is applied in the fields to enrich the soil. Potters source their raw materials from clay deposits in the tank bed. Also, earth from the tanks is used for brick making, road laying and construction. Collective and individual fishing is done in many tanks at the end of the water season and villagers share the catch. Firewood for cooking is availed by the villagers from the tank beds. In many tanks, tree-lined buns provide shade and create a cool microclimate for men and animals. All the inland bird sanctuaries are the tanks. It is an economy of service that is offered by the tanks. The present condition of many tanks is not desirable. A state like Tamil Nadu has lost over half a million hectare of tank irrigated lands in the last five decades. Though frequent efforts are made by the government to address the problems of tanks, their condition seems to be distressing. Reasons for the decline of tanks and ponds are many. It varies from place to place. There are several problems noticed in them. Buns are weak, encroachment and siltation, sedimentation of tank beds, choked or leaky sluices, damaged weirs, abundant growth of weeds in channels and tank beds, poor maintenance, dumping of garbage and discharging sewage. Fixing these problems deserves everyone's attention. Restoring Tanks and Ponds Tank repairs are one of the oldest engineering programs that continue since the medieval times. Called many names such as tank restoration, tank rehabilitation, tank standardization, tank development and tank modernization. They all aim to improve the conditions of the tanks and their components. Restoring tanks, though looks simple, is a complex process. The communities that depend on the tank have to be organized. Repair and reconstruction works have to be planned with their participation. Above all, it has to be carried out in a systematic manner. Professionals in Pradhan extend their technical and managerial skills to local communities to carry out such projects. The farmers are encouraged to contribute to the work through cash, kind and labour. Depending on the context and funds, Pradhan Indigo Tank Project undertakes strengthening of tank buns and repairs to tank structures, desilting of tank bed, promote tree planting and fishery, training the villagers in water-saving agricultural practices. Pradhan has implemented a two-year project during 2020 to 22 in reviving 11 tanks and 10 ponds. The following are some of the visible benefits witnessed by the user villagers. Vadavirukai. Vadavirukai, a multicast, multi-religious hamlet, has 113 households. The village has an ancient tank and two small ponds, one for bathing and another for drinking water. The tank has a 1.8 km long bund with a water spread area of 17 hectares. 42 families own 31 hectares of tank irrigated lands and 49 hectares of dry lands adjoining them. There are around 1,100 sheep and goats graze and depend on the tank. The supply chain for the tank is nearly 1 km long and passes through neighbouring villages. Cultivation of paddy is done in semi-dry conditions. This means the tank water is used for protective irrigation. If there is water left after first crop, the farmers may go for the second crop, usually cotton, chilies, gingerly and some pulses. But that rarely happened in the recent three decades. The village has got two combined water supply schemes operated by the government, but they are unreliable. A community well is located on the tank bund 
and operated by the village panchayat for domestic uses. The shallow well gives potable water whenever the tank gets filled, otherwise the water is saline and not potable. The drinking water pond is shallow and has no proper inlet to fill it, hence dysfunctional for the last few years. Drinking water shortage is a chronic problem. Villagers buy water from trucks that sell drinking water. In 2020, the villagers have approached Pradhan to help them rehabilitate the tanks and the pond. Pradhan team has organized the villagers. Two associations were formed by uniting all castes. Bank accounts were opened in the name of the association to transact funds. Pradhan professionals have assessed the needs. The tank bund was very weak. The main sluice was leaking and about to collapse and the supply channel encroached. Above all, there was no excavation done in the last 30 years. Also, the villagers wanted a deeper pit closer to the community well, so that their well will yield potable water. The supply channel encroachment was cleared, widened by 10 meters and excavated for a depth of 60 cm for a length of 650 meters. Around 400 meter length of the bund is strengthened using the soil excavated in a deeper pit closer to the well. The sluice got repaired and cracks on the walls are closed and made operable. The work is carried out from August to October and completed before the rains. Traditional tree species in the village common places, including the buns, were planted. In all, Pradhan has provided 2.6 lakhs for excavators and the villagers have mobilized 1.46 lakhs to pay for tractors to take out the earth to form the bund. The work is completed in four months. The tank got filled soon after our work in October 2020. This happened ahead of many surrounding tanks. This is because of the channel excavation. Above all, even in the month of March 2022, water still remains in the tank and flows by gravity. The ponds were filled from the tank twice and availability for domestic use is ensured. In the last 30 years and more, the tank did not have water for such a long time in a year. The community well provided adequate potable water throughout the year. The farmers attribute this success to the excavation of the supply channel and excavation of a deep pit next to the well. And fingerlings are let into the tank and waiting to be harvested. Similarly, the inlet of the pond was reconstructed and excavation was done to strengthen the drinking water bund. The pond stores adequate water and will last through the year. In all, Pradhan has provided 2.54 lakh rupees and people mobilized 1.54 lakhs to hire labor, tractors and construction materials. Incidental to water development, a lot of birds started visiting the tanks in its vicinity. Pradhan, with the support of Bombay Natural History Society BNHS, experts, found 92 different species here. The project has created a lasting impact in other places too. The most important benefit the people realize in rehabilitated tanks and ponds is the extended availability of water. Pradhan believes that a focused effort is required to improve the conditions of tanks and ponds. <laughs>